Hello everyone. Welcome you all to this new video. So in today's video, we are discussing one more question from the passing package that is uh, explain the basics of wireless channel modding or explain the concepts of delay spread, coherence bandwidth, Doppler spread and coherence type. Okay. So these are the concepts which are going to be discussing in this video. So please uh, watch this video and uh, answer uh, these notes I've already provided in the video's description also for the, where you'll be getting all five modules, uh, all the answers of passing packages. Okay. So please go and watch that and uh, study it. Okay. So in this video, I'll just discuss with all the answers in brief, starting from the uh, basics of wireless channel modding modeling. So you see here the wireless channel, basically how it is represented as the channel is characterized by multiple non line of sight. That is N L O S signal paths caused by scattering from objects in the environment. So the objects in the environments are basically buildings, trees. So basically those are objects are basically the channel obstructions, which would be uh, causing the signal to be varied. That is signal direction would be varied and it would be leading to the different paths and multiple uh, signals would be getting collided to each other or the collision would be taking place. Okay. So these are the basically the objects from the environment for the scattering. Okay. So you see here with respect to the uh, wireless channel profile, how the schematic is given for different values of uh, G here for G naught, G1, G2, G3. Okay. So this is not required, but still, if you want, you could note it down. Okay. So the simple channel model. So this is not there. Now let's get to the concept of delay spread. Okay, so you see what do you mean by delay spread delay spread here because the total signal power arrives incrementally over the range of delays. So here basically the relay spread is the total signal power which should be obtaining over the different set range of delays. Okay, so different range of delays would be obtaining by different uh, scattering parameters. Obtained. Okay, so the delay spread different range of delays are given by tau naught to tau L minus one. It is spread out in time. Okay, so this phenomenon is called as delay spread. So in a wireless channel, the power arrives in spread out over time due to multiple paths. So that's why here the delay spread uh, spectrum, you see how it is given by uh, with respect to tau naught, tau one up to tau y, tau l minus two, tau l minus one. This is the basic delay spread uh, spectrum. Okay, please note it down for the delay spread. So the path gains and associated delays for L is equal to four multipath channel. It is given by A naught square, A one square, A two square, A three square. The gains and the delays are tau naught, tau one, tau two, tau three. So this is basically for L is equal to four for n number of multipath channels. Easily you could be form forming the gains and delays here. Okay. Now let's get to the concept of delay spread. That is maximum delay spread. Okay. In maximum delay spread, uh, it could be defined as the time difference between the arrival of the first and the last significant multipath component. So in the, in general, the equation for uh, maximum delay spread is given by Sigma T max is equal to tau L minus one divided by sorry, minus tau naught where uh, the first and last significant multipath components with respect to this, you see here, this is the last component, right? Multipath component. And this is the first component. The subtraction of this would be giving you the maximum delay spread happening overall across the spectrum. Okay. So, this is with respect to maximum delay spread. One problem is also given here. Uh, they won't be asking this. This is one more delay spread that is RMS delay spread. Okay. What do you mean by this? You see here, the RMS delay spread automatically suppresses the contribution of weak spurious multipath components, providing a better measure of the actual power spread of the signal. Okay. So one limitation of maximum delay spread is that the, this Sigma T max can be misleading because it includes very weak and late arriving paths that contribute little power. Okay. Uh, the little power means that it does not weight the delays. That is, it won't be completely dependent on the delays by their corresponding power. Next is introduction of this uh, delay spread. The RMS delay spread is a more realistic in indicator because it, because it weights each path's delay by the fraction of total power it carries. Okay. So the, uh, the path delays obtained with respect to the different uh, delays, that path delays would be calculated through the weights of the overall power to be carried. Okay. The overall power would be the total power. It would be basically dependent on the total power with respect to the actual power. Okay. So it is calculated as the standard deviation of the delay, delay values around their power weighted mean. So the calculation steps you see here, first, first step is normalized power gains. That is, you need to be calculating the fraction of total power in each path. So that is given by B suffix I that is uh, B of I is equal to G of I divided by summation of J equal to zero to L minus one into G of J so into G of J and second step is calculate mean delay 
mean delay is calculated by computing the power weighted average delay that is uh, tau bar tau bar is given by summation of i equal to 0 to l minus 1 di into tau i okay third step is calculate the rms delay spread so rms delay spread in, in, in order to calculate delay spread you should be computing the standard deviation of the delays around this mean so that is given by uh, sig uh, sigma t rms that is equal to uh, square root of summation of i equal to 0 to l minus 1 d of i into t of i minus the mean delay whole square okay so these are the steps in order to be calculating the total rms delay spread okay so this is the rms delay spread now let's get to the concept of coherence bandwidth okay coherence bandwidth in wireless communication you see here coherence bandwidth that is uh, uh, denoted as b suffix c is a statistical measure of the range of frequencies over which a wireless channel can be considered flat meaning all frequency components experience approximately the same magnitude of fading and linear phase shift that is the fading and the phase shift uh, components with respect to coherence bandwidth would be somehow nearly equal to each other the bandwidths you see here in all these figures the bandwidths are there right so these are the bandwidths obtained here for uh, input signal spectrums here with respect to wireless channel okay so whatever i have highlighted here right these are the coherence bandwidths here it is basically the uh, ch change in the signal that is you see here uh, we are seeing the signal rise and uh, after some time we are seeing the signal drop okay so that the intermediate signal whatever is there that is the drastic change happening that region is called as the coherence bandwidth in wireless communication okay in wireless communication as i've told you we are having the obstructions from the environment that obstructions would be leading to the change in the uh, change in the frequency of the signal right so that change could be represented through this coherence bandwidth okay so this is basically the concept of coherence bandwidth so if if they ask the question related to this these many things if it right it is sufficient okay so these are some of the parameters under coherence uh, uh, bandwidth one is flat fading if the transmitted signals bandwidth that is b suffix s is less than or equal to the coherence bandwidth all frequency component of the signal experience the same attenuation the signal is received without distortion next is related to frequency selective fading if the signals bandwidth is greater than the coherence bandwidth that is if bs is greater than bc different frequency components of the signal experience different attenuations okay so different attenuation factors and different values of bandwidth would be obtained so these are some of the parameters of the coherence bandwidth now let's get to the concept related to coherence time okay so let us see now what do you mean by coherence time So coherence time, I guess it's not there here. So yeah, I guess it's not there. I will be trying to cover it in the next upcoming video. Okay. So coherence time, I'll cover it in the upcoming video. Till then you see the concept of this coherence bandwidth. Okay. So yeah, that's all for this video guys. So we'll see you in the upcoming videos with the, some of the concepts of module two important questions. Okay. So please, please like.